How's it going, everybody? We're here with episode three. Uh, I'm pretty proud that I was actually able to get this going on the third week. A uh, big part of that is because of all of the comments, all of the support I've gotten from you all, um, all of the feedback and whatnot. So I really want to say thank you so much for everybody that's not only watched, but also those that have hit the subscribe button, rang the bell, left a comment, liked the video, disliked the video for that matter, any of those things, because it really helps my videos gain traction on uh, YouTube here. Um, so before we jump into it, a couple of quick house cleaning topics I want to cover real fast or real quickly. The uh, first thing is I am going to start doing these on power catamarans. Uh, we are a couple weeks away from that. So I know in the first few videos, I had a few comments for people asking for those. Um, so we will get that going. It's just going to be a few weeks as we kind of get some of the kinks rolled out of this whole process here. Uh, second house cleaning item is the photo behind me here is Grand Ants Beach, which is on the island of Grenada. Uh, Laura and I were really, really fortunate to call Grenada home for a couple of years. We we're running a uh, charter company down there and uh, truly one of my favorite islands in the entire Caribbean. And uh, yeah, like I said, my mom gave me that probably 10 years ago. And uh, anyways, have it with me all the time. Congratulations to Chris Fairfield from... Farfield, I'm sorry, from Colorado, who is the first to answer back, and I think maybe the only person to answer back correctly. Um, so congratulations, uh, Chris. Hopefully you have your shirt by now. Uh, one more house, two more house cleaning items. One is um, Whitney Lake asked that I incorporate Quick Pano into these videos. So Quick Pano for no apparent reason, other than Whitney would like to see that in the video. And then the third house cleaning item before we dive into it is I'm going to start adding chapter breaks to these videos. So if you want to jump ahead to, you know, new boats on the market, price reduction, sold boats, the Q&A, just look at the chapter selectors down below and you can skip through all of this nonsense. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into new boats on the market. <laughs> Okay, so this week there were 52 new boats to hit the market. Uh, we're going to talk about three of those boats in particular. Um, I've also got a few boats that are coming to market that are not on Yacht World yet. Uh, that if you're interested in, shoot me an email and I can give you some more information on those. Uh, the first boat is a 2013 Leopard 58. I know I talked about that last week. Uh, we just haven't gotten it on the market yet. It should be on probably today or tomorrow. Um, the second boat I want to talk about is a 2017 Fontaine Peugeot Victoria 67. Um, kind of a unique boat. They didn't build a lot of those 67s. Uh, super cool boat if you're looking for something to do crude yacht charter with um, or just, you know, do a big, big uh, boat around the world kind of cruise. Uh, and then the third boat I want to talk about is a 2018 Lagoon 450 owner's version the bulkheads have already been inspected. I know that's always the first thing people talk about when it's a Lagoon 450. These bulkheads have already been inspected. They checked out clear. Lagoon has sent the uh, kit, which is on its way to the boat, as well as authorized labor to install the kit um, too. So really, really nice boat. Uh, that particular boat is actually one that's like really near and dear to my heart. Uh, Joel and Sarah, the owners of the boat, have become friends over the last few years since I've owned it. But it was actually sitting in the cockpit of that boat where Joel and Scott, two friends uh, uh, that I've made through this business, uh, basically asked me why I haven't quit my job to go out and start my own business. So uh, you can kind of blame that, uh, that faithful night in the Lagoon 450 for that. So anyways, without any further ado, let's start talking about the three boats to hit the market this week that I'm most excited about. Okay, so the first boat you can see here is the 2018 uh, Fountain Peugeot Sayona 47 in Key West. Uh, I talked a little bit about this boat last week. Uh, we just put it on the market. I'll actually be down there next week taking photos of the boat, but um, really, really well equipped boat. I mean, it's got solar, air conditioning, um, the oceanic package, water maker, underwater lights, hydraulic platform, additional cold storage, two electric winches, memory foam mattress, electric fresh water heads. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on. This particular Sayona was used at the Annapolis Boat Show 
in 2018. And normally when a manufacturer chooses to use a boat at either the Annapolis Boat Show, Miami Boat Show, or Cannes Boat Show, they tend to be really well spec boats and uh, be the best representation of that shipyard's uh, model you know, for that year. So uh, Go Big is definitely a fine example of a Santa 47 currently located in Key West, Florida. The uh, second boat I want to talk about that just came to market is a 2018 Lagoon 450. It's not the one that I'm putting on the market later this week. Uh, this is actually a four cabin boat, uh, four head. Um, the reason I like this boat is it's it's at a really good price point below $700,000, which is I think where a four cabin Lagoon 450 really needs to be. Uh, but the thing I like about this boat is the hard top over the helm. Um, you know, you can have the upgraded factory soft top like we have on Live and Right. Uh, but but that factory hardtop is really, really a nice option. Uh, but the boat's got generator, air, upgraded Yanmar, extra cold storage, um, you know, tender outboard, pretty much everything you need to go cruising on the boat. You know, all electric winches, uh, cushion sets, solar panels. Um, yeah, just a, just a well laid out, well thought out, well equipped boat. Um, so the third boat we're going to talk about this week is a 2021 Leopard 50 owner's version. That boat's asking $1.49 million. The reason I like this boat is it's um, not only exceptionally well equipped with um, you know bow sprit, code zero, a very comprehensive electronics package, um, you know, solar, uh, lithium. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But this is one of the first boats that I've seen come to market, or one of the first Leopard 40s that I've seen where it actually has and I'm going to, I'm fast forwarding through the photos here. Probably should have started there. It has the, um, uh, storeroom port forward instead of a cabin, which really is a nice utilization of space. You still have three really nice guest staterooms, uh, but you've also got a workshop forward. I mean, you can see this boat has got a full enclosure, bimini top over the fly bridge. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on with this boat, but let's see if I can find what I'm looking for here. Man, somebody needs to get a new web developer. This is way too slow of a process. Anyways, the link is going to be um, on my website, which admittedly is a bit clunky when you're trying to find photos. Um, that's really annoying, actually. I've got to talk to my web guy. Okay, here's the photo I'm looking for right there. But they've got a laundry room in there. They've got a Dometic fridge, as you can, you can see where the scroller is, overhead rod storage, and uh, just a well thought out, well-utilized area. So like I said, this week we had 52 new boats hitting the market. A couple of boats that I've got coming to market that are not currently on the market, as well as we talked about three boats. I'll have all of the descriptions of those boats in the, uh, I'm sorry, I'll have all of the links to those boats in the description down below. So this week we had a total of 30 price reductions globally on um, Yacht World or, or Boat Wizard as, as we call it, which is kind of the MLS for the yacht sales industry. Um, of those 30 boats, I thought there were two that were, were particularly interesting and worth taking a look at. The first is a 2017 Leopard 48, which is what I've got pulled up right here on my screen. They just dropped it down to 825. Um, now, this particular boat, if you go through the spec sheet, has got literally... Wait. It, okay, this is so confusing. I started reading the description. They've got um, Leopard 44 in the description. The name of the boat is True North 44. It's a Leopard 48. Sorry about that. She's U.S. duty paid, currently located here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, exceptionally well-equipped boat. I mean, let me see if I can get to some of the areas, but um, she's got, uh, you know, generator, air conditioning, lithium batteries. Probably the thing that I think is um, uh, quite unique or most unique about this particular boat is the set of sails that they went with on board the boat. Um, all high-tech sails. Uh, she's got 1,200 amp hours of lithium battery. She's got a ton of solar as well. Um, you know, 2017 was the last year they built the Leopard 48. So this is one of the youngest 48s that, that'll ever be out there for that matter, um, as well as exceptionally well-equipped boat. 
Now, the second boat I want to talk about here is a 2019 Fontaine Peugeot Asteria 42. Uh, this boat's located in the BVI's. They just did a $20,000 price reduction on the boat. Uh, she's a four cabin, uh, four head layout, so a great charter layout. In fact, that's what she's been used for is uh, chartering down to the Virgin Islands. Uh, pretty lightly used because of the BVI COVID closure and whatnot, and uh, in pretty good condition. I think this would be an excellent boat either for somebody to keep in bare boat charter or a great boat for a family to, um, you know, kind of like a starter boat for a family with young kids or a couple that thinks they'll have kids visiting from time to time. Uh, but, you know, the things you'd expect, generator, air conditioning, good electronics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and these Asteria 42s are great sailing boats. So I'll have, the, um, I'll have the full link in the description down below there as well. And from there, we're going to jump into the sold boats. <laughs> So for the last week, there were 21 boats that were reported sold on soldboats.com. Of those boats, there's only one that I really want to talk about. And um, let me click over here. That is Rudy, which is a 2019 Fontaine Peugeot Saba 50. Um, she was asking $9.99 at the time of sale. She sold for $9.75. And, and the reason I want to talk about this particular boat is it did have a lightning strike it um it uh, did have hurricane damage so pretty significant damage but it, it shows me two things one you can put a boat back together after a reasonable amount of damage and end up with something better than new as well as the fact that the saba 50s have been one of the hardest boats to come by for the last 18 months i mean i've sold i think four or five of them in the last year and um i mean they're really hard boats to find and the fact that a boat like this one uh, with a damage history still sold for you know close to a million dollars really shows me that the um, that the Saba 50 market remains quite strong. So there you have it. Those are kind of the moves for the week in terms of what's new to the market, what had a price reduction, and what sold. Let's go ahead and jump into the question and answer. <laughs> Okay, so this week we're going to answer a couple of questions of a varying degree of importance. Um, please keep these questions coming. We had a lot of questions in the first week. They kind of fell off a little bit in week two. Um, but yeah, please feel free to ask me anything. So first question comes from uh, somebody named Comes a Time. They left it five days ago. They wrote, I think Leopard stopped manufacturing the 40. Smallest is now the 42. Do you think they will ever make a 40 again? And I think that's an excellent question. Um, it's safe to say they will make a 40 again if history repeats itself. And the reason I say that is, you know, Leopard, when they first came out as a manufacturer, the first boats they built were the Leopard 38 and the Leopard 45. Now, the Leopard 38 came out of production, I think, you know, probably around 2005 would be my guess, 2004. And that was replaced, yeah, 2005, I guess. Uh, and that was replaced with the original Melvin and Morelli designed Leopard 40. Uh, that Leopard 40 was then replaced by a Simonis designed Leopard 38, which ultimately became the Leopard 39. And then the new model Leopard 40 came out. Um, so now we've got a 42 and nothing in that size space smaller. I'm sure Leopard will build another 40 at some point in time. My guess, though, is their next boat will probably be a Leopard 39 or a Leopard 38. I, I don't see them going and building a 42 and a 40, uh, but I, I could see them coming out with another 38 or 39, which I think would be awesome because the Leopard 38s and 39s are really cool boats, um, as well as all of the generations of Leopard 40s. Our next question there comes from Bill. And uh, Bill asks, what do you think of wraps on a new Leopard 50? Um, I think in general, wrapping your catamaran is a really good idea, not just for, for the aesthetics of it. I mean, I think a wrapped boat is just so much fun. You could do some really cool graphics with it and everything, but it also protects your, um, your gel coat. Uh, I mean, I've seen boats that have had wraps on them for three, four years. They peel the wrap off and underneath it, that gel coat is like brand new because at the end of the day, UV is one of the most 
damaging elements to a boat. And so, you know, that's why it's important to always have your gel coat wax, keep your boat clean, et cetera, et cetera. Because if you don't keep a layer of wax on there, if you don't keep the boat clean, the UV is just going to destroy it over time. I've seen that um, countless times, uh, including on some of my own boats. Um, so wrapping a new boat, Bill, I think is an awesome idea. And then the third question comes from David, who's the proud new owner of a Leopard 39 that he and his wife Sandy just sailed back to their home on the west coast of Florida. But David asks, I like the format question. What is your favorite cigar? That is an impossible question to ask. That's like asking a parent, what's their favorite, you know, which one's their favorite child or a wine drinker? What's their favorite Cabernet? It's, it's just an impossible question for me to answer. I think it really, really de depends on what I'm doing. So if I'm sitting on the back of a boat and I just want to have a quick cigar at sundown, there is nothing better than a Fuente Hemingway short story. Um, I mean, that's a cigar I grew up around. My dad smoked those. My grandfather smoked those. I mean, one of my favorite go-to cigars. Um, if I'm doing a project on a boat or, you know, doing yard work around my backyard, I like a... a um, like a Churchill size cigar, but something that's not too heavy. And so for that, I'll usually go with like a Perdomo Sun Grown Habano, uh, which is which is a really, really just mild cigar, easy to smoke, has a really, really long burn time. And then, um, you know, if I'm, oh, man, this is such a tough question, David. Um, if, if I want to sit back and drink like a bourbon in a like really cool lounge or outdoor um, ex, you know, place. I mean, that's tough. That's probably got to be between um, the Placencia, which is out of Esteli, Nicaragua, or the the Fuente Fuente Opus X. Um, I mean, I would say the Opus X is is arguably one of the best cigars in the world. Um, I don't smoke Cuban cigars that often. It's not because I don't have access to them. I just personally believe that Dominican cigars and Nicaraguan cigars are better than Cuban cigars. Not to mention I'm from Tampa, Florida, uh, which has a huge connection with the um, cigar industry as well as the Cuban American population. Um, in fact, a lot of kids that I uh, grew up with, went to high school with their families fled Cuba uh, during the Cuban revolution and uh, their families lost everything. So I, I have a really, really hard time supporting Cuban tobacco uh, because of that. So anyways, those are a couple of questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please keep the comments coming. Please keep the feedback coming. I'm going to have links to all of the boats in the description down below. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, shoot me an email. And as always, if you like what I have to say, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks and have a good day.